In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to um, set up a, an Arduino basically on a breadboard. And you might want to do this if you want to build a permanent circuit. Uh, you could program on the Arduino first um, and then buy an Atmel Atmega uh, 328P chip, which is the chip the Arduino Uno uses, and then use that on a permanent circuit. Um, and there's two ways I'm going to show you how to do this. One, one first way is kind of risky, where you actually program the uh, program the Arduino and then pull the chip out of the Arduino and then um, set it up on a breadboard. And then the second way is a safer way, and that is um, putting the chip on the breadboard and then programming it through an FTDI cable. Okay, so these are two um, Arduino. Uh, compatible uh, devices, UNO compatible. Um, one's made by Saint Smart, and, or they're both made by Saint Smart. Okay, so the first way I'm going to um, show how to uh, build this on a breadboard is by extracting the chip from the Arduino after I program it. And I just want to show you these two styles because you can do that with, with this inline pin style chip, right? So I'll program that, pull it out, put it on the breadboard, and then just replace it with another chip. Um, this style of UNO has a surface mount chip, so obviously you're not going to be able to do it with this. Um, don't don't even try. Um, you you would ruin the chip trying to take that off there, um, and you probably wouldn't be able to get another one soldered back on anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead then and program this one and then extract the chip. Okay, so I've plugged the uh, Arduino board in to the USB port, and I'm just gonna um, keep it simple, use the Blink sketch. So just go to Examples, Basic, Blink, and that's the one, that's what I'm gonna use to uh, upload and do this demonstration. Okay, so I'm just gonna upload that. Okay. Okay, so now that um, the program is uploaded to the chip, I want to take this this little tool which is made for extracting chips and put each end on the edge of the chip. So I'll just kind of like that on each end. Okay. And then I just want to kind of pull straight out like that. Okay. So no pins bent. I wouldn't try uh, if you don't have a tool like this, you would want to be careful trying to like, pry pry each end out like with a screwdriver because you could end up bending the pins. I think it's better just to pull uh, straight up and out. Okay, so now we have the chip and we're just going to put it on the breadboard. Okay, so that's the LM7805 voltage regulator. So that's, that's powering the, the power rails. And then I'm going to have that connected to this power supply. And then if I turn that on, um, I have it set to 7.5 volts. Um, I could probably just hook this up directly to 5 volts, but this is if you maybe had a battery or something uh, that's larger than 5 volts, say like 9 volts, you would then want to use this, um, this voltage regulator. Okay, so there's the blink sketch, pin 13. Um, is just blinking okay so so this would be one way you could uh, set up an Arduino on a breadboard is just pull it pull the chip out of the Arduino after you program it and then um, if this were some a real project you could uh, then uh, after you test it in on the breadboard then actually uh, get a get a real circuit board and then solder it into your circuit you'd have a, a little chip holder you would probably wouldn't solder the chip directly Okay, so the next way I'm going to program an Arduino uh, and make a chip on a breadboard is using this FTDI cable. Okay, so this is a this converts uh, USB to serial. So this is the the USB end, and then that's the the serial end. And I originally got this to program these these boards, these Diabolinos. Um, these are Arduino Uno compatible boards. But they don't have USB uh, chips on them or USB input, so you have to plug this in here in order to program them. 
So that's why I originally got this cable. But you can also use it then to program the chip directly onto a breadboard. So that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so I have uh, the the Atmega chip uh, on the breadboard, and it's hooked up as it was before. Um, although I do have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor connected to the reset pin, which is pin one on there. Do we know? So it's the top of the pin, and then I still have. Then off that, I have this 10k pull-up resistor. Um, okay, so and I've got the FTDI cable, the USB N. USB end plugged into the USB port, so that's the computer is going to use that to do the programming. Okay, so this is the other end of it, and the black wire is the uh, the ground. We're not going to use the brown wire. Red wire is the 5 volt VCC. Okay, the the orange wire is the serial transmit. Yellow wire is serial receive, and the green wire is the RTS, and we're going to use that as the reset. Okay, so when we're programming, so I have the RTS, so that's the green wire there going to this. I have a some some of these jumper wires plugged in, so that's going to the white wire, and that goes to the pin of the uh, capacitor that goes eventually to uh, pin one, the reset pin. Okay, and then. This blue wire is connected to serial receive, so that needs to go to the Arduino transmit. So that's, you can see the blue wire there goes to pin 3, so that's the Arduino transmit pin. And similarly, then um, the orange wire is connected to this brown, brown wire. Okay, so recall the orange wire is a transmit, so that needs to go to the Arduino receive. Which is pin two, so you can see where that brown wire connects to the uh, the Atmel at Mega pin two. Okay, so I'm going to show you the sketch I'm going to upload, and um, and then we're going to move this chip to a voltage regulated breadboard and run it. Okay, so real quick, this is the uh, Arduino sketch that I'm going to upload to that that uh, chip on the breadboard, and um, this is going to just run a common cathode. LED RGB and it's just going to kind of send it random random colors so I just kind of set the red green blue pins not not much to this sketch it's just an example but um, if you do use the FTDI uh, cable okay so for Linux it's gonna it's gonna show up as slash dev slash TTY slash USB something for, for me it's gonna be zero and so that's gonna be the device name and and that's different because no, normally for an Arduino connected directly to a USB like this one, I have another Arduino connected to my USB port. It's going to show up. The device name is going to be like slash dev slash tty acm zero. So for the FTDI, so this is what I want to select for Linux. I don't know what these are going to look like for Windows or Mac because um, I don't I don't really program on those using this IDE. Okay, so that said, and I'm just gonna upload the sketch like normal, and so that worked. And so next, um, I'm gonna uh, swap up that breadboard just a little and power it uh, using a bench power supply through a voltage regulator. Okay, so um, I'm using this uh, bench power supply. Uh, set at 7.6 volts and then that's connected to the breadboard now which has an LM7805 voltage regulator to bring that down to regulated 5 volts on these power rails and the, the chip circuit the only difference is I connected up the wires to the RGB um, so that's running like I said that's just kind of running doing random uh, colors it's kind of hard to see on this on this camera but um, and then I removed that 0.1 microfarad capacitor off the reset pin and just connected the 10 kilo ohm resistor directly to it since we're not programming it now. And so anyway, this was just kind of to show you how you could program with the FTDI cable. And so what you would do now, like if, if you were really going to create a permanent circuit, then you would just solder these components onto a, a 
a, like a project board and then you wouldn't have to waste you know this this entire Arduino uh, you could use just buy the components which are going to be cheaper to build your permit circuit also keep in mind you, you need to look at the data sheet for the the um, at mega uh, 328p to see what those pins are those pins don't match necessarily what these headers are on this Arduino board so you actually need to look and see um, uh, what these pins go to when you connect this up especially once you connect up you know the circuit um, because they don't they don't match those headers uh, so anyway thank you for watching the video